should be a fun one. I do think this matchup is very, very close. Really just going to depend on uh, some powerful discard spells here, Maria. All right, so what is the tipping point of this match? What's the difference maker here? Uh, I think Thoughtseize is probably the most important card in the matchup from the vampire side of things, right? Need to be able to target Lotus Field's hand in some form or fashion. And Seth does have access to both Thoughtseize and Duress. Now, it's going to be it's going to need to be those discard spells in combination with a click with, excuse me, with a quick clock. If Seth has that sort of thing going, then I think it's favorable for him. But if he is kind of just not drawing particularly well, kind of messing around a little bit, and his deck is not cooperating, Lotus Field can kill you pretty darn quickly through at least one discard spell. So again, discard plus pressure. That's what equals a W. All right, it's time for the best hour in Magic. You're not going to want to go anywhere, everyone. We have four spots left to give away in our top eight. Let's do it. I'm going to pass the baton over to Ailey and Corey here with round number 16. Baton gratefully received. Maria, thank you very much. We have a seasoned veteran up against a debutante in this very first win and in for this round. Corey, are you excited, my friend? I am so excited. This is by far my favorite round of a pro tour. It's when everything matters and uh, every single match has a ton of implications. So oh, it's going it to be sure exciting. Is. It's going to be an excellent, excellent round indeed. So. Hold on to your seats, friends, because we got four more people to put into the top eight. Some a little more clear cut than others. Yep. In this matchup specifically, a win is in. So they don't have to sweat about tie breaks or anything like that. But for the rest of the players down the standings, it's not that clear cut. Yeah, absolutely. And these two decks, really kind of the two decks of the tournament, you know, they've been doing extremely well. One unknown, unknown quantity, one kind of the new up and rising deck, but both are extremely strong and we're underway. Alrighty, let's kick things off. I'm gonna take a look see in hand here of Adrian. Okay. What can we hit? Wow. So first of all, this is a bit of a close, kind of sketchy hand here for Adrian, mm -hmm. as no matter what, Adrian has three lands, but really needs another land to make Lotus Field work. Now with having the scry, it's decent. Uh, you can you can have a good chance at finding the second land, but it, it does come with a fail rate. Archdruid's Charm would have been able to get a land there, but uh, that is the target for the duress from Seth Manfield. So <laughs> Temple Scry likes what he sees on top and passes the turn back to Seth. Yeah, really only one thing you would leave on top there. So we're going to just assume Adrian is going to be putting a Lotus Field into play next turn, putting a land from probably the top of the deck into play, and then Arboreal Grazer uh, has the ability to flash in excuse me, uh, play and get a Lotus Field ready to go. So our boy Grazer showing up on time, doing its job, and just gonna hang out there for the rest of the game. We might get in the way of a particular 6-5 uh, vampire we've yeah. seen uh, chewing up the competition this weekend. Yeah, absolutely. So this is a big turn for Seth. This is the Fable, the Mirror Breaker turn. This is the Soren Vein Ripper turn. Seth really needs to have some pressure, something like a Thoughtseize plus a Harvester, pretty decent as well. Uh, and then for the flip side for Adrian, you really do need to find one more land, Thespian Sage being the best one to really start going off. But Ooh. any land uh, will will do here for Adrian because that Lotus Field is not going to do anything here uh, for next turn. Speaking of land, I think Seth is struggling to find land number three here, discarding the Vein Ripper, but does have a third land to hit the board. So, so that's not does, the ideal turn for him. Yeah, and, and sacking that before playing the land, that would kind of mean that it is uh, miss, the hand is missing land three, and with discarding a Vein, a vein Reaper. Vein Reaper could easily have a second copy here wrapped up for next turn. But here we go. Vizier of Tumbling Sands hits the board. So one of the ways that this deck has to untap the powerful land in Lotus Field. Yeah, and Adrian could easily just win the game next turn. <laughs> so um, this is going to be the big turn for Seth. Just Soren and Vein Ripper not as effective here. Something like Soren sack Blood Tithe Harvester to deal with Vizier of Tumbling Sands might even be a better play than bringing in the Vein Ripper. Attack here from the Blood Tithe Harvester. Adrian's going to take it. So down to 14 he goes. What's the follow-up here from Seth Manfield? Does he have the powerful Planeswalker in hand? Or is it just going to be Fable of the Mirror Breaker? I say just Fable of the Mirror yeah. Breaker. Yeah, gotta be a big turn here. 
you really just have to disrupt at this point. You know, Adrian had one of those hands where, you know, it was going to be a little slow to develop, actually needed the second land to even be able to be functioning. But now that we're past that point, that is the stage of the game that we're living in. And now Seth has to recognize that you have to deal with uh, stuff from Adrian, not necessarily just flashing this in. So I wouldn't be shocked, even with a Vein Ripper in hand, uh, that this Soren gets pointed at the Vizier of Tumbling Sounds. Soren has hit the board. Now it's just a matter of what it is that he does. So, Blessing. <laughs> Activating the Muta Vault and chucking it at the Vizier of Tumbling Sands. So. Yeah, and I'd be interested to see if Seth does have the powerful vampire in hand. My guess would be yes, and that this is just the better play for right now. Turn passes back here to Adrian. His life has made a little more difficult with the uh, departure of that Vizier, but we're going to cycle here yep. and start floating some mana. Now, baseline, uh, Adrian will be able to do the pour over the pages mm -hmm. and just get that free thing. And there's the ultimatum plus a charm and a hidden strength. Whoa. That was a juicy pour over the pages here. Wow. And uh, yeah, I mean, this, this could be the last turn of this game. It's a little tough mm -hmm. when you don't have the second Lotus Field or a Vizier in play. You know, hidden strings on Vizier plus Lotus Field is kind of the same as having two Lotus Fields. But without it, it's still possible. It just gets to be a little bit tougher. It's discarding the second copy of Lotus Field. Would love to find a Thespian stage to copy the Lotus Field on board already. Not on the cards right now for Adrian, but we are getting our indicators out, so let's float some mana, Corey. Yeah, Seth was looking to move that uh, mana placeholder there out of the way, and Adrian's like, no, not, not quite yet. Here we go, hidden strings. There's the two black mana for Emergent Ultimatum. Here is the two for blue, and then we're going to see three green. And Emergent Ultimatum is going to get cast here, and we'll see if it is just truly over. That is usually the sign yeah. that the game is over. Yeah, there's nothing that the Rakdos decks can do in this case. You know, you have to do everything before this gets going. So now it's just a case of, you know, hope that Adrian whiffs. Yep. Maybe has one of the Emergent Ultimatum targets already in hand and can only get something like Pour Over the Pages, mm -hmm. Omniscience, Leer, something along those lines. But if you're able to get the full package here, uh, yeah, I guess that was exactly the targets here. Didn't go for Dark Petition. So Omniscience, Leer, Pour Over the Pages. More than likely, Omniscience has to get shuffled back here. Mm -hmm. Now, if you let your opponent keep Omniscience, you're kind of saying, all right, just hope the rest of your hand is bad. And with this many cards in hand, plus the fact that Pour Over the Pages would be free, Leer would hit the battlefield, and then all the hidden strings and Pour Over the Pages yeah. in the graveyard would be online, I think you are just priced in to put back the extremely powerful enchantment. Yeah, I'm with you there, Corey. Lear hitting the battlefield unlocks the graveyard, which essentially becomes a second hand, so mm -hmm. still multiple things that Adrian will do after Seth's made his decision. Yeah, and Seth is kind of like, well, that one's really bad, that one's really bad. They're all real bad. Yeah, Pour Over the Pages is the only one that's for sure not getting shuffled back, but that is a concession to Seth just saying, your hand has to be bad, because Leer and Pour of the Pages is probably good enough already. And I believe we saw that charm in hand. Mm -hmm. So no matter what, the charm can just go search up Leer, and we're all done here. Pour of the Pages. Dig in. <laughs> and yep. that is all that Seth needs to hear and or see. So Adrian picking up a really quick game number one there. So into game number two as the players get into the first turns here. An update from Chris Larson versus Jesse Hampton. Chris Larson is 1-0 at the moment. So okay. we'll keep you updated on the other players as we get them. Yeah, and that is teammates. Uh, team Handshake, kind of the new additions there with Amalia combo up against Is It Phoenix there for that matchup. A pretty close matchup.
but there is that Ashiok uh, <laughs> there from that Izzet list to really help in that matchup. And wow, that's the surveil omniscience wow. into the yard. That is not what Adrian wants to do, but you also do not want to draw that. So that changes the texture of this game already from turn one. Smuggler's Copter on the board here, turn two for Seth Manfield. Would love to find some hand disruption, thought seize duress. Yeah, and with Seth looking like he kept seven here, you and with not having a thought seize, any one mana spell here, duress or thought seize, you've got to think that the follow up is big and could be the biggest with uh, mm. Soren here and Vein Ripper. Come on, Soren, one time, let's go. Zagoth Trium, the land for Adrian. And that's double Dark Petition in hand Oof. there for Adrian, which is a good card, but not amazing here. And Fable the Mirror Breaker, definitely the second best, but still able to crew up Smuggler's Copter. And that's the thing you want to do up against this Lotus Field deck when you're playing anything that doesn't have to do with blue, mm -hmm. is you want to just jam, jam, jam until the spot where your opponent could kill you. Then you have to slow everything down and start to really disrupt your opponent's plan. But as it stands here with Otto Borio Grazer on turn one, turn three, Adrian cannot win the game here. Tapping out here, going for the Vizier. Yep. All right. now, now this is that turn that I was talking about. Now you do have to interact, either kill Vizier or the Tumbling Sands, or start looking at Adrian's hand, because even just float three mana, play Lotus Field, untap a Viz Vizier or the Tumbling Sands, then you have Pour of the Pages online already, and you can win from that spot. Fable the Mirror Breaker, Chapter 2 on the stack for Seth. Deciding what he's going to discard here, if he wants to draw a couple extra cards or not. So things looking all right, but as you mentioned, Corey really needs a way to interact with what Adrian's got going on here. Yep, absolutely. This is a very big turn in this game. Dark Petition, there's only two copies in the deck. And they're both currently in his hand. Yeah, not ideal. Big thank here for former world champion Seth Manfield. No stranger to uh, this kind of pressure. Yeah, this and stage. It, and has been really creeping up on the standings here. Started mm -hmm. off not so great, but has just had a great day two at this Pro Tour and has kind of rallied his way back into contention like he normally does. Mm -hmm. After a while, it's kind of like, oh, yeah, you know, that player's in the top eight again, or, you know, vying for top 16 or whatever it is. It's like, it's, it's no real shocker. Yeah, more expected at this point. Oh, there we go. Duress. And just two dark petitions, so that is the only choice. And yeah, that hand is quite bad. And now the spell master is not even online, so Adrian really needs something like pour over the pages and for Vizier to leave, uh, Vizier to live. I'm sure Seth would love it if Vizier left. Yes. <laughs> and you don't want to leave in too much removal against the Lotus Field deck. So we do have Soren, but. I, I guess with Soren here and an attack from the Shaman, you could pair that together by animating Mutavolt and throwing it at Vizier, but outside of that, there's usually not a lot of removal left in post board. Yeah, yeah the Fatal Pushes tend to come out in this matchup. But not always. We've definitely seen some of the other players leaving this in on this mm -hmm. Vampire deck. Dusk Legion Zealot getting another time to shine in a format. He's going to crew the copter and uh, we'll get an attack in here for five. Goblin Shaman's going to make the treasure token. And we will draw and discard courtesy of the Thopter. Another Cavern of Souls hits the art. Yep. We'll see what the follow up is with this treasure token. That's kind of. I believe Seth. Can still make a land drop yeah. this turn. Hasn't played a land yet. Yep. Okay. It's like another hand disruption spell. <laughs> Definitely relevant. Dark petition number two hits the yard. Now it's really all about uh, pour over the pages would be by far the best <laughs> draw. Charm would be good. Ultimatum would be good. I think that was a charm. 
Adrian would love to see that. It's going to be Lotus Field hitting the board. Which two lands get got? It's going to be those two. And Maybe Adrian. Zangoth Triumph and not floating mana or anything, just pass and turn back. Yep, no point. Just able to play this very slow, mm -hmm. kind of disguised to Seth that, oops, maybe I didn't draw anything meaningful. Mm -hmm. But now, if you were to go charm for Lear at end step, now next turn, maybe you can actually do something relevant. But yeah, Adrian is running out of time in this game. Yeah, for sure. Things certainly looking much better in this game for Seth Manfield. He's assembling quite the board here and now has a flipped. Fable, or excuse me, a reflection of Kiki Jiki. So, a similar attack from the previous turn. Gonna draw some cards, get some treasure. Yeah, and see what the follow up is. You know, any hand disruption is kinda dead. Yeah. Thoughtseize actually would play here, but Seth might not even cast it, as uh, you would think that uh, there's not a target. Yeah. Can I have the Oracle on Sorian? Preacher of the Schism in the bin. Adrian just looking, well, asking for the Oracle text on Sauron Imperius Bloodlord. Yep, just double checking, know what it is here uh, in case Adrian wants to block. Down to 11 he goes. Post combat, what Seth got up his sleeve here. He's been doing a pretty good job of digging through his library. Land drop a turn. And there There's is Sauron. the namesake card. We'll see. At this point, you're just very priced into dealing with Vizier. Because mm -hmm. now we can see the Archmage's Charm search up Lear, but at the best it's going to do now is just hard cast a Lear and uh, not going to be that efficient. Seth might even be able to just win the game next turn. So everything looking great for our previous world yeah. champion. Ooh, hi, Shieldred. Right. That shuts down any kind of like Ooh. draw three pour over the pages style line. Yeah, that hurts now. Yes, Vayne Ripper's the new hotness, but uh, let's not forget about Shielder the Apocalypse. Yep, still does some damage here. And Vayne Ripper, to be fair, is not as good in this matchup as Shieldred. Shieldred actually is much better because half of the lines that Adrian needs to win do involve a lot of pour over the pages. Yeah. And it's really a tough card to deal with, so. This is actually the better threat, um, except Vein Ripper can come out as soon as turn three, and Shieldred takes turn four. So, Vein Ripper's a little faster, but Shieldred is a little more resilient in this deck. For sure. In this matchup. <laughs> Four of the pages, draw three cards, take six damage. Take six, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, Adrian's going to go to nine here with this draw step, limiting that yep. to only one pour over the pages. And the charm couldn't even go get Lear here because Adrian's so far behind, had to get a temple to just scry. Wow. And I think that's a Voyaging Seder off the top, and I think that should just pretty much uh, lock this one up. Yep, that's gonna do it for game number two. So game number three, Here the decider. Go. All it takes is this one game to get one of these players into the top eight. So deep breath here in the booth. But the players are just like, oh yeah, yeah it's every other Saturday. Yeah, no probably biggie. not. <laughs> probably not, yeah. Plenty to play for here. The top eight, of course, making it into this year's World Championship. Yeah, absolutely. Being in your first Pro Tour and uh, getting to compete in your first World Championship yeah. would be the absolute dream. And here we go. Adrian's hand does not contain the namesake card here. So, I mean, the Lotus Field deck, as powerful as it is, right, is it does oh, not Adrian. do yep. anything when you don't have Lotus Field. There's no way to win. I mean, there is some kind of strange scenario of you get like six, seven other lands that aren't Lotus Field, but mm -hmm. no real viable way to win here, so. Yeah, definitely uh, playing the game in hard mode, so. Yeah, so Sylvan Scrying had to be the take here yeah. to make sure Lotus Field can't be brought into play easily, and now it's up to Adrian to top deck, and to top deck rather quickly. Yeah. It's a pass, right? Yeah, yeah. So, just land number two, pass the turn back to Seth. Can he do it again? Can we keep digging out value from Adrian's hand here, or uh, are we going to get some more proactive plays going? Yeah, now is the time for Seth to be proactive and try to get a clock going. Mm -hmm. Dusk Legion Zealot, lose a life, draw a card. Not ideal, but if it is the follow-up, you're able to go with uh, Soren. Um, that is not so bad. Adrian did have the option to Psycho Vizier here, but 
might be really just trying to hard cast it. It's not ideal here. I would still think I would want to cycle it here because maybe you can get Sylvan Scrying. But uh, decides to play it instead, and there's a risk. If Soren just comes down and you sacrifice uh, your vampire to yeah. kill this, all of a sudden you didn't draw a card, you didn't get closer to Lotus Field. Um, so I don't love that play. Yeah, very much on the back foot for Adrian, yeah. if that is what happens this turn. So let's see where Seth goes for turn number three here. Vizier, a decent blocker for uh, the Dusk Legion Zealot, but likely not going to be attacking if there is a Sauron in hand. Yeah, let's see if Seth has the powerful draw this time around. Overall has just had, you know, the deck's kind of B draw, yeah. you know? But still, this is just a good Rakdos mid-range deck uh, that can fight without the powerful combination of Soren and Bane Ripper. Big thanks here for Seth Manfield. So it has options. That's what I'm getting from uh, the big thing here as he's in the tank, yeah. deciding where he wants to go with his turn. Okay, so there is Soren. At worst case, we're going to see that Lightning Helix play that's going to be pretty punishing for Adrian. And with the think here of not immediately doing it, mm -hmm. you got to think the Vein Ripper's there as well. But I think you have time to Vein Ripper next turn, and yeah. the clock still goes. Where if your opponent, if Adrian does have Lotus Field and is able to uh, start generating a ton of mana, it can be pretty dangerous. So. Both yeah. plays here from Seth uh, are, are very much able to be thinking about. Oh, there it is. he's going for it. Vein Ripper on the board. Okay, this play had a risk, and so far Seth is right because Adrian didn't That's have it. I don't know what was right. That's on, I, I don't know what's in your hand. I mean, you could have a deck for sure. Probably. <laughs> Adrian's <laughs> thinking, the, well, why didn't you just do that sooner? But it was not as clear and cut. Mm. Yeah. Well, um, yeah. <laughs> Seth not giving anything away here. No, I, I'm with Seth. That was close. It may not look close because Adrian doesn't have Lotus Field, but that yeah. doesn't mean it's not close. Yeah, you know, we have perfect information. Yeah. Valaged yeah. Recovery. Yeah. Gonna go get Sylvan yes. Scrying. Yeah. Yeah. And this play was turned on because Soren did put a Vein Ripper into play. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there was a little bit of that risk. But here, now Seth does get to attack for seven. And then Soren's going to be able to kill Vizier. That's nine. And then 11. So, and then Mutavolt could attack as well. So, if Seth wants to, could put Adrian down to seven and put a lethal clock next turn and force Adrian to do it. I, that play in itself is so tempting. I can't imagine <laughs> Seth wouldn't want to do anything else. Yeah, and having omniscience in hand with nothing else to follow it up, just, you know, yeah. no gas in that hand at all. Yes, Seth has inform Seth has perfect information, knows all three cards. Mm -hmm. So I think he's gonna see it. And not animating Mutavolt must have an even better play. Yeah. yeah. Fable of the Mirror Breaker, perhaps. <laughs> another sword and another Vein Ripper. <laughs> Got to think step one is deal with Vizier. Mm-hmm. Okay. There's Fable. Get our little goblin. With one mana to follow up, if you also have the Thoughtsies, this is uh, almost an auto-win scenario here. Yep. Activated. Soren's other plus one ability. Nine, 19. Yep. And you gain three more, right? For to bolt the Vizier off. Yep. Doesn't really matter for Seth's life total, but well, can be relevant. Well, yeah. <laughs> and I don't think Adrian can I get out of this. So, no. I think he's going to have to... Uh, he's going to have to look at his cards and... Uh, there it is. Extend the hands of Seth Manfield into another top eight. Congratulations to him, Corey. The vampire list is awesome. Huge congrats <laughs> to Seth. You can see how much it means to him. You know, it's been a while yeah. since he's been in one of these top eights. So really great to see. And that is two vampire decks from CFB. Wow. I think they truly did it, Haley. I think that team deserves, uh, you know, a round of applause for that 
list because we are so excited to see that in action. We were so excited yeah. when we saw it submitted. So this yeah. is great. And I think uh, Team CFB here, even if it was just these two, which there's a chance to be more, yeah. is already just going to be incredibly excited and incredibly happy with their preparation come yep. dinner tonight that's for sure oh yeah <laughs> so awesome stuff there for team cfb but we still have more people to more. put into the top eight so let's hear from maria about our next match can Luis scott vargas get yet another pro tour top eight he'll have to go through ming yang chen this round coming up next the breakout deck of the weekend, Rakdos Vampires is ripping veins and taking names. We'll get another one here against the Lotus Field combo at Powerful Land. I think is going to have something to say about that. Vampires versus Lotus Field combo coming up in just a little bit. Welcome back to coverage of Pro Tour Murders at Karlov Manor. There we see Chris Larson beating Jesse Hampton 2-0. But he's not jumping for joy because it's not an absolute guarantee that he is in. By our quick maths, we think he's a lock. But yeah. we're not going to say yes, congratulations just yet until all the games are complete, Corey. Yep, absolutely. Still just huge congratulations to Chris, one of my best friends. So uh, I'm pumped to, to see that and uh, really hope he makes it in. Uh, I hope so too. It'll be awesome to see your buddy make it into top eight and you there won't be biased at all, right? At all, yep. <laughs> <laughs> Luis Scott Vargas now up against Minyang Chen. Luis is looking pretty good if he wins this. Yes. Based on tiebreakers, but for Minyang Chen, going to have to sweat it out a little bit more if yep, he wins. Absolutely. Both these players are in a little bit better of a scenario or situation than Christopher Larson. But of course, all these tiebreaker sweats, kind of mm -hmm. anything can happen. You know, we've seen these four or five percent jumps going into the last round. So, you know, they're going to the winner of this is going to be very happy, but still really, really be starting to sweat. So oh, yeah. here we go. Uh, exact rematch yeah. of the match starting, we just uh, saw. Let's see if another vampire player can make it one. in or another Lotus Field combo gamer. Deja vu. Perfect start here, though. Thought sees turn one, takes a look. These are the options. Sylvan scrying. Okay, Bay of wishes. There's a mulligan here from okay, Chen already. Yeah. Archdruid's charm. And just like we saw in the last game, there is one card that stands out as an auto take here, and <laughs> it is Sylvan Scrying. That does shut down the deck, and now Chen just has to top deck something to even be playing and uh, doing the nice thing for us here of putting that face up. 
and there is a grazer to hurry out this second land so if Chen is able to find Lotus Field or Sylvan Scrying next mm -hmm. turn, we got a game. If not, huge advantage to Louis Scott Vargas. Shucks in the Blood Crypt, turn two. Get out the Dusk Legion Zealot. Let's draw a card, pass the turn back to Minyang Chen. What does he find? Quick flash to the camera is one of those powerful blue spells. Yeah, I didn't get a glimpse of it, but... Now let's see if Luis has the draw that Seth has as well. I think I see Soren, but I do not see any Vein Rippers. Yeah, just going to be a boy. sacrifice there. Thank you. Yep. Again, Dusk Legion Zella taking care of the Voyaging Seder. It looks like Luis might have mulliganed as well, as you only have a, a couple of hand Ooh. or a couple cards left in hand. But I did see Thoughtseize. And uh, oh, wow, what a draw there. Mm -hmm. Thoughtseize plus Fable. Now we have a game, but that was it an insanely good draw there from Chen. Yeah, that is exactly what Chen needed to see in the situation to keep up with what Luis is doing. Yep. Another Blood Crypt shocked in. You hate to see it if you're the Lotus combo player. Yep, so it's just gonna be Fable. Thoughts is tick up Soren on nothing here as it only ticks up on Vampires, I believe. And now we have Archmage's Charm, or excuse me, Archduet's Arch Charm. To really just take so th so that Chen didn't find Thespian stage. That was the main thing. Four of the pages making some wishes here. Uh, yeah. So let's see uh, what Fair Wishes is going to grant for yeah. Ming Yancheng. A lot of options when you're not going to just win the game straight away. You can go for Elder Gargaroth to maybe draw mm -hmm. um, to draw a land and cast that. Oh, non-creature. Never mind. Can't go for Arder Elder Gargaroth. So. Not a lot of great hits. You can get yeah, a no. ley line of sanctity. I mean, 99% of the time you get approach of the second sun. Yeah. Uh, that might be a little ambitious though at this point. Yeah, game. maybe a sunfall. Sunfall looks decent here to slow down the game a little bit, but just goes for emergent ultimatum as if you find hidden strings, you have two, five, six, you're still one short. Um, so that is just a long-term plan here from Chen, and Ooh. there it is. What a top deck. <laughs> oh. uh, All right. There we Things go. Things looking very, very good indeed here for Luis Scott Vargas. OK, so here is poor. Chen is drawn as well as you can to get out of this yeah. situation. Uh, but Luis is drawn quite well as well. And that's Balagad, Land, and Grazer here. Now Chen really needs like a Hidden Strings next turn and basically only that because we've already made a land drop this turn so you can't really just uh play a land hope to top deck a land sure. now we could <laughs> balagat to get back pour over the pages probably the play you need to make give yourself more chances next turn yeah a boreal grazer with that reach might just be getting in the way of a vein ripper here from Yan cheng just to stem the bleeding a little bit yeah, and no matter what, there's not going to be a draw that gives gives yeah. Luis the win next turn. Mm -hmm. So Chen will have a chance to uh, try to go off next turn and maybe even one other turn. So this is just going to be a very close game. Close indeed. Turn passes back now to Luis. He's going to plus up good old Sauron Imperius Bloodlord and uh, give the powerful Vein Ripper lifelink and a counter. So. Yeah, does brave get, little grazer jumps in the way. Yeah, it doesn't get better as a block than uh, blocking an eight power creature here. So kind of an auto block. Thank you. Oh, sorry, I gained seven. Yeah, gaining seven there from yeah. Vein Ripper. Yeah. Twenty-one, no big deal. Really trivial as far as Louise's yeah. life total. It doesn't really matter. All right, Vizier is okay. a great draw next to Hidden Strings. That's about the best. Let's see if we can another find vizier. a land. Look like another vizier on top there. Wow, if that was another vizier, then one thing you can do is tap the lotus field for black mana. Mm -hmm. Use one black and a blue to untap lotus field. Then you have the black covered, then the lotus. Yeah, you have emergent ultimatum if that's a vizier. I believe wow. that's what I spied. Let's see, flash it to camera quickly, and it is. So is that GG? <laughs> I think it <laughs> might be already. Wow, Vizier into Vizier here after Luis stripped away the wow. ability to even get 
Lotus Field and yeah. what, this is turn six and Chen is still able to do this. Wow. This is the big difference of what we saw the last round versus this round is Adrian did not draw that well off mm -hmm. the top. Chen did. Yeah, that Lotus Field arrived just in time. They both had very similar draws from mm -hmm. the uh, Rakdos Vampire side, so. So going to dig through the, di the library to find the three targets for this emergent ultimatum. Now, the one thing Luis can have as far as a way to interact with this in a meaningful way is the one of Bitter Triumph. Mm -hmm. Outside of that, there's nothing that Luis can really do as far as interaction, so. If the Bitter Triumph is there, though, you Chen would stack it in such a way where you resolve the pour over the pages first, mm -hmm. then Lear comes into play, and then once the first spell gets cast from the graveyard, then Bitter Triumph would kill Lear to interact in a little bit of a meaningful way. But still, even if that was the case, Chen would be heavily advantaged. Oh, yeah. This is where Lotus Field combo. Uh... Minyoung, please lift up your graveyard. Your graveyard's hanging off the mat there. Giving us the perfect information yep, there, beautiful. thanks to the table spotter. Appreciate Thank that. Thank you very much. As the graveyard is becoming extremely relevant now. Oh, yeah. And there is, the rest of the hand is just absolute gas here from Chen. So if it's no, this would be the opportunity to bitter triumph there. It's not there. I think we're going to be heading to game number two. I think so. So Minyan Cheng drew out of that situation perfectly and is now going through the motions until we get to the win condition which uh, in the sideboard is Approach of the Second Sun. Yep. Three black. And kind of looking forward to the sideboard here, yeah. uh, there's not a ton of sideboarding that happens from the Lotus Field side, but from Luis. Luis does have two Damping Spheres, a Liliana, which is questionable, mm -hmm. two more Duresses, which are for sure coming in, and then Kranko's Buzz Crusher yeah. is actually quite nice, as you can actually destroy Lotus Field. Like, I really, really want to see that hit one Lotus Field this weekend. Yeah. I, 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 I have done it to Lotus <laughs> Field, where I have destroyed it with that, and it just doesn't really happen Ooh. the way that you think it will um, in actual play. There's a Behold Beyond in hand. Oh, yeah, this, this game's is over. sweet. Yeah, <laughs> this, this game's completely over. So ciphering hidden strings onto Lear now. The whole yeah. graveyard is Minyan Cheng's playground. And this Lotus Field combo deck is vying for the position of deck of the tournament, Corey. It really is. You know, it's hard to argue with the numbers. And in mm -hmm. fact, you know, I won't because, uh, <laughs> you know, it is performing the best by the stats. Nice. You also got to put into perspective that this Rakdos Vampire deck, which is incredibly good, is also played by pretty much all Hall of Famers. Yeah. You know, so whatever deck they're going to play, the win rate is going to be a little inflated. Mm -hmm. So if all of Channel Fireball decided to play Lotus Field, yeah. That deck would still probably have the highest win percentage. Um, but I do think this deck has a leg up on the field. Although I think this matchup is still just very close. Mostly because Vein Ripper isn't the catch all be all in this matchup. And I think that's really yeah. what dictates if Vein Ripper is good, the matchup is good. Yeah. Yeah. In this matchup, not so good. Yeah. So post board, Luis is probably thinking in this situation all right, what am I bringing in? Yeah. All hand disruption, make sure to yeah. prevent Minyan Chang from getting to the situation. Yeah, Obviously, you can't disrupt the top of the one. library, so. Mm -hmm. Yep, pretty much here, Amalia and Azorius Control are the three matchups where Vayne Ripper isn't a complete all-star. It's still good, and uh, six power when you're, you know, on turn three is going to be good against any deck, but it's not great against those three. So Mingyang Chen up a game against Hall of Famer Luis Scott Vargas, looking for yet another top eight. Thoughtseize to start. Let's take a look. Atraxa in hand, Vizier, we've got hidden strings, and then four lands, one of them being Lotus Field. Yep, and that is the best thing to have in hand for the Lotus Field combo deck is the Lotus Field itself. Because mm -hmm. if you have Sylvan Scrying, you can see this exactly happen. Yep. It can get Thoughtseized away. And the Atraxa was brought in from the sideboard as a, a nice piece of spicy tech that we haven't seen <laughs> from a lot of these lists. Oh yeah, she's super easy to cost with the amount of mana that this deck generates. Yeah, really is. All right, there is Liliana and Soren and land three as far as a glimpse at Luis Scott Vargas's hand. So you have the powerful Planeswalker, but Luis is definitely knocking the top of the deck and just say, have oh, it be Vayne, Dr Vayne Ripper here. Go. But there's been stage cool. found by Sylvan Scrying there. 
Yeah. But Liliana is Thank a decent uh, consolation prize here. Just to start, you know, doing some damage to the hand here. But as it stands, Luis is in a lot of trouble. Yeah, it's not looking yeah. too hot right now. Liliana of the Veil hits the board. Thank you. Minyang gets to pick yeah. which card is discarded yep. from Liliana. Yeah, Into that's a little awkward when you're playing with your stuff. hand revealed. Uh, yeah. you, uh, <laughs> Luis will have to write that hand down pretty soon, and uh, Chen will have to pick that up. So now we have the Thespian stage, we have the Lotus Field, and we have the time to, to get them both into play. So at worst, we go Lotus Field this turn, copy it with Thespian stage the next turn, and then Atraxa and a bunch of fireworks the turn yeah. after. Luis just doesn't have the pressure right now unless he top decks Vein Ripper. And even then, I would still kind of put the advantage to Chen. That's how far behind Luis is right now. Oh, there it is, Corey. Lotus Field on the board. Sacrifice the other two lands. Next turn, Thespian Stage to copy it. And then, yeah, still plenty of time here. That's a blood Star grip. Imperius Bloodlord hits the board. And uh, we're going to start puff buffing up this Blood Tithe Harvester. So gaining life, getting in for more damage. Yep, that Soren should be at five. Uh, not incredibly relevant, but something I'm sure the players will catch here. Alrighty, Merge ultimatum in hand there. And here it is, just copying it right away. And a big draw step for Luis has two chances at a good card, mm -hmm. as this yeah. blood uh, will get rid of this probably land. Yeah. Another blood tithe harvester. Right. Now, one thing that is a big deal here is Liliana is going to tick up to six, which is the magic Ooh, number. Yeah. She gets nasty when there's six loyalty counters. Yeah. And there's the vein ripper. Oh. That Soren should be at two though. Now it is kind of relevant. Yeah, but that's it. Mm -hmm. Two, hidden, Two strings, hidden strings, emergent Jeez. ultimatum. Chen just showed it. It was like, is this OK to just call it good? And this is the last match of Luis's tournament. So oh, might as well just make him have it. But that is going to be game, set, and match here for Mingyang Chen. Excellent stuff here for oh. Mingyang Chen on Lotus Field combo. Beating one of the best players Magic has ever seen. Yeah. But for Luis Scott Vargas fans, he did go 10 and 6 or better to yeah. make it into the next Pro Tour. Exactly. Going to be coming back, you know, going to get some valuable points as well. Mm -hmm. So maybe the next Pro Tour doesn't have to do as well to kind of chain them together. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, just huge congratulations to Ming Yang Chen. Got lucky in the spot that he needed to mm -hmm. on game one and then just played masterfully. You, yeah. can, you can really tell he knows his way around his deck. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's done so many reps with his deck. You can just tell by the, you know, the, the fluid motion of his decisions. He's yeah. tapping everything. So Emergent Ultimatum, going to go and find some cards. Yeah. Nothing yeah, really that Luis can do unless there's a bit of triumph in hand. But even then. No, it just doesn't matter anymore. Doesn't matter anymore. And Luis is hellbent. This is oh, yeah. now it is. Mi Yang Chen just making sure to not mess this up, yeah. first of all. You know, just make sure to go through the motions like he's done a hundred times, I imagine. Uh, but then the real sweat begins yeah. to see if uh, tiebreakers will allow uh, Chen to be in as well. Looking at Behold Beyond there, definitely doesn't want to give a whole new hand to the opponent. Yep. Yeah, and it's really going to be more than likely that Mi Yang Chen or Christopher Larson, you know, that's kind of going to yeah. be the sweat spot there. Based on tiebreakers, it yep. was a certainty for Luis Scott Vargas to make it in with a win. But Minyan Cheng, not in that position. So fingers crossed for the young man. Yeah, and we still, I want to put some more attention to this Rakdos Vampire deck. You know, this is going to be two players in the top eight with a third so very close. We've seen dominant team decks before, and it's usually the ones that are the very most dominant. You know, I think the most recent one, uh, we remember Team Handshake with Rakdos and Standard. Mm -hmm. They put four players into the top eight. Um, you know, it is kind of that three and four. There's the that hand shows extended. The one. Yeah. So congratulations to Minyang Chen. 12 wins. Yeah. 
but has to wait until all the games are complete to determine whether or not he has made it into a top eight. Yeah, Chen is about to, you know, have the longest possible 20 minute wait or whatever until yeah. standings get posted. Uh, time just kind of stands still at that point until you uh, are declared in the top eight. Oh boy. That's, sure. that's gonna be a nice top eight announcement coming up later, that's for sure. Well, we've got five certainties in. We need to go and check out another one here. Jason Yi up against Simon Nielsen, our player of the year for 2022, okay. 2023. Jason Yi having an absolutely stellar pro tour thus far. So let's jump in and see who comes away with the victory here. Yep, Simon Nielsen clawing back with this Boros Heroic deck had probably one of the funniest sound bites I, I've heard in a long time yeah. of like, what's your good matchup? Lotus Field, I dominate. What's your bad one? Every other one. <laughs> That proving to not be the case as Simon has had a quite a strong run here. You always like about the ride. And uh, this is not yeah. the matchup either of these players are really prepared for. You yeah. know, this Jeskai Creativity deck and Boros Heroics are firmly, uh, you know, on the lower side. Jeskai Creativity was actually not in other, but Boros Heroic uh, definitely. Yep. Yeah, I was about to say I'm pretty sure. Yeah. You know they kind of fall into the other category. Yeah, or no. at least they're very close. They yeah. were not one of the big three, four or five, I don't believe. That sounds about right to me. Boris Heroic kind of coming out of nowhere. Boris Convoke being one of the more known quantities in uh, Pioneer, but things starting off really, really well here. Homestead Courage getting some counters on this favorite Hoplite and uh, Ancestral Rage to adding, excuse me, Ancestral Anger adding to the power. Yeah, and a big reminder here, these players are in game three. So this is yeah. the game Do or die. for the top eight for these players. This Boris Heroic deck is so, so beholden to the top of the library, you know. Mm. There are a couple cantrips in there, you know, Divine Strike being able to try and dig through and chain a couple of these, these cheap cantrips, these cheap spells together. But uh, yep. if you run out of gas, you know, there's really no resiliency you're coming back from. Yeah, and I think this matchup is not very great for Jason, would be my guess. I think they have a tough time dealing with this kind of pressure where your big payoff, which is getting Atraxa into play, sometimes just doesn't matter. Simon can just bypass that and make a bigger creature at times. You know, um, yeah. it, of course, if Simon has not amassed a gigantic battlefield, Atraxa can still take over, but... I would think this is slightly disadvantaged here for Jason Yee. Doesn't feel like a great spot for them. Yep. So here is going to put a big onus on God's willing, some kind of protection, and also at the same time putting a big priority on yep. Jason having really? something like get lost, um, yep. some other piece of removal, some early removal, and I don't see it so far. Otherwise, I think we would have had it cast. Homestead Courage Ooh. flashback. Ooh. That is a, nice. great, a great chart. Oh. Yeah, that that one gets, it dodges God's willing, dodges mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. So yeah. huge turn three play. Doesn't target, just says bye-bye, yep. small things. So that is exactly what Jason needed to slow Simon Nielsen down. Okay, is this our hasty threat? <laughs> yeah, I got it. Okay. I don't want a bug anymore. Our 10th district, Ooh, yep, that nice. was ideal. 10th district legionnaire. Okay. Similar effect to the favorite hoplites. We're going to start putting Monstrous Rage. Okay, that is excellent, but I yep. think that was the last of the pump spells. So that is six damage here, putting Jason to three. And I think I saw Land Showdown, which is still a Ooh. great follow up. Yeah. But this creature has to be dealt with, and it has to be dealt with now. Otherwise, this game and match is over. Oh, I think Gloria. I did see Wandering Emperor, though. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, which Wandering is a great Emperor card. is a great answer for this 10th District Legionnaire. Boom. Yep, straight away. Not going to wait until the upkeep at all, as we saw Jason masterfully do in previous rounds. Yeah, there's too much risk on that to wait until oh, yeah. combat for Simon's turn. Now it's time to see if Simon can restock, get another threat on the battlefield, or if it's just showdown time. But one turn of reprieve might be everything that Jason needs to creativity. With the Wandering Emperor being able to make a 2-2, if creativity is there, the prerequisite four mana is already yeah. available. And at this stage, you know, I was saying Atraxa cannot be the biggest deal at, at certain times. Mm -hmm. This kind of battlefield, this is definitely enough for Atraxa to take over. Oh, nice. 
Okay. Finds Ten. a creature and then three spells to go along with it. This this card is so sweet. The Illuminated Virtuoso, Double Strike, Connive. Yeah. That's one way to fill your hand. Yeah, and 10 District, Legionnaire, and Monastery right. Swift Spear are definitely the okay. best ones. If a permanent does, yeah. yeah. Nice. Spikefield has it, right. taking care of the Wandering Emperor. So that line that you mentioned, Corey, of creating the token and then creativity is no longer an option here for yeah, this. That was a big hit. Shark Typhoon, okay. There's only two Spikefield Hazards, and uh, that could have been exactly what is needed. I don't see the creativity mm -mm. at the moment, which I feel like, you know, at least the matches we've been casting, Jason just has not found that creativity, no. the namesake card. They've had a hard time with that, for sure. I saw another Lockdown in hand, as well as the Shark Typhoon, so they could cycle that and get into the creativity. Yeah, definitely can't do it this turn. And there's no hasty threat from Simon right now, mm -mm. so... I would think Jason's gonna live for sure another turn. Mm -hmm. So now it's how can you best set up to deal with the extremely powerful Illuminator Virtuoso. Go. Just a land, not shocking it in. The turn passes back to Simon Nielsen. Can Simon find a hasty threat and give it evasion of some sort? Knowing that uh, there is a shark ready to block for Jason. Yep, these are the big pivotal turns. That's another showdown off the top, though. Oh. So another way to restock. Now, you don't really want to cast showdown now because you want to use the value that this yeah. first showdown brought. Yeah, things are going to disappear off that showdown, so... Illuminator Virtuoso, first and foremost. Oh, man. Let's see how many things we can connive into. Going to start things off, perhaps, with Lorenz's escape. Nope. Hey, destroy Looking this. towards Light of Hope. Now, this is awesome, oh, too. Ooh, destroy nice. Destroy this temporary lockdown. Yeah, now, so as you were saying, oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, if yeah, you yeah, saw yeah, the yeah, secondary uh, temporary lockdown, that's going to be a mm. great answer. But Simon was priced into doing that now, as you can't cast the cards anymore after this turn. Simon would have loved that yeah. to be in hand, yeah. to be able to do that yep. at Jason's sure. end step. For sure. Yep, that's all good. So, Lorenz. Escape, targeting the Virtuoso, can I have trigger? Gonna resolve first. There's another Virtuoso drawn, Spikefield Hazard and Showdown as Ooh. the three cards, I believe. Man, that hand is gas for Simon. Yeah, pretty good. If if Simon had the perfect information that we did, I mm -hmm. think he would have been discarding anything but what he's about to discard, as mm. these creatures are about, about to get locked down again. Uh, yeah. Counter. Yes, and then this one gets a counter from yep. Showdown. me. Simon has seen so many cards yeah. in this game so far. Close matchup here between yep. two extremely impressive players this weekend. Yeah, it's been really impressive watching both of these somewhat mm -hmm. fringe decks, uh, you know, just maneuver very masterfully. Now, with temporary lockdown probably coming down next turn, we might just see a cycle of the Jetmere Garden instead of cycling the Shark. Mm -hmm. But maybe you still like cycle the shark <laughs> just in case you top deck creativity, and then you can still take that avenue if you want to. That is a consideration for Jason, hoping that they have creativity on top of the library. But it yep. is going to be the Jetmere Garden. <laughs> That just means it's yeah. lockdown time. And with Wandering Emperor as a oh. follow-up after lockdown, oh. Good grief. things may be starting to slip away in a Lightning Helix oh. as well. Wow, Jason is making this so, so difficult for Simon. Just when you think, oh yeah, Boris Heroic's got it. Nope, uh, yeah. just got creativity, controlling the board perfectly, keeping the threats off the board. Yeah, and that being said, there is still the very powerful follow-up of Showdown to do uh -huh. some restocking, and I don't think there's any kind of counter spell. You kind of see the fist bump <laughs> there from Simon, because if there was, that game might be uh. over. But now, is there a threat? There's oh, a swift spear. Oh, nice. <gasps> Is that lethal? Well, there is well, the helix. The sharks and the helix, yes. So... Uh, do we have protection spells in hand? No, but the helix mm -hmm. itself can kind of give protection. What does that other one drop? That's Homestead Courage. Homestead Courage. Yeah. So it's a with, sorcery. With Homestead Courage here, Courage. Uh, this Courage. alone would be lethal Ooh. if there was nothing. But I think if Jason fires this helix at Three. Swift Spear right now, 
Uh, yeah, it has to because there's three things buffing it. The prowess and the two triggers off of the showdowns. Yes. Well, there's only the one oh, showdown, the one right? Yes, because that's so just coming. prowess, showdown, and this is about to yeah, pump it. Five. <gasps> oh, okay, so it's shark attack time. Must be, right? Yeah. And it is pretty face up here that to present lethal, Simon would have to flash back that courage. Yeah. But now if that last card is Monstrous Rage. Good one, good one. Okay. Spike Field Hazard? Both Spike Field Hazards are already used. Okay. One's in play, one's in the graveyard, so that doesn't matter. Big, big draw here for Jason Yi. Yep. Can they find creativity? Doesn't look like it. That's a no more, <sighs> no lies. more lies. And here's the thing about the Wandering Emperor with Homestead Courage in the yard, it's not getting turned sideways. Mm. So it's not able to exile if Simon's able to find a way to give it trample, which I'm only really seeing Monstrous Rage yeah, in the game. That's, that's gonna be Simon Nielsen making, I can't believe I'm saying this, the fourth wow. top eight in a row. Good or grief. this is going to be a game where Jason Yee comes back from one life. We'll have to ask Frank Carsten how many people have done that. How many players have strung together four top eights in a row? I think I already remember this when we did the math on Nathan before, and mm -hmm. I think it's just LSV and Nathan. Wow. Yeah, there might be one other person, but uh, oh, that Ooh. was a monstrous rage. Yeah, it hand. was. <laughs> oh, man, that is going to pump up this creature so, so much. I don't even think the Lightning Helix in hand can keep Jason alive. I don't think so. If that was Monstrous Rage, has the ability to pay for No More Lies as well. What a draw if that was the case. It's the most tentative to combat yes. I have ever seen for a Monastery Swift Spear. Yeah. It's Helix, No More Lies, and Wandering Emperor. Wandering Emperor can make a 2-2. You can put three toughness in yeah. front of this switcher. I mean, the math is not even remotely close on Four, this. Five, six, seven okay. power now? Six, seven. Yeah. Did we get the counter on the showdown? I believe there was, yeah. Yeah, the prowess trigger happened as well as the plus one, plus one counter from Homestead Courage. So now, I mean, I mean, this Swift Spear is so much over lethal. Oh, yeah. If it is indeed Monstrous Rage. I think it was. Simon waiting for Jason to make the move. Yeah, there's really no point in flashing in the Wandering yeah. Emperor to block. It doesn't really matter. It's Monstrous oh. Rage. <laughs> Monstrous Rage targeting the Swift Spear. There is a No More Lies in hand. And you just auto pay for this. Yeah. That's not going to be enough. Lightning Helix. Is it going to be enough? And that is going to be Simon Nielsen into another top eight. Wow. There's the hand extended. <laughs> Simon Nielsen does it again. Unbelievable. How does Team Handshake and Simon Nielsen keep doing this? Our 2023 Player of the Year is positioned to be wow. in the best possible spot you can be in after one Pro Tour. This is unbelievable. Unbelievable. Incredible stuff. We heard him in an interview earlier this weekend saying, you know, he just wants to try and get another top eight. He wants to go for five, you know, maybe 10. Yeah. I mean, heck, go for world champion at this rate. Simon went from almost not making the draft on day number one, from yep. taking a nice relaxing bike ride to the venue and getting lost to 3 0 his draft to then going 7-1 and one on day <laughs> one and just locked up a top eight with that top deck monstrous rage. What an incredible thing to watch. Unbelievable stuff. I hope he has set like three alarms and asked for a wake up call <laughs> just to make sure that he's here on time tomorrow because yeah, top eight Sunday. But again, wow. congratulations to Jason Yee. Unbelievable stuff from them and Team Sanctum of All. So yeah, absolutely. Excellent, that, excellent stuff. That Jeskai creativity deck looked extremely cool as well. Heroic oh, yeah. is not something we really thought was going to be a big player either. Um, so really cool to see these not so mainstream uh, decks going at it, and yeah, big congratulations yeah, we've got some, to both. We've
We've got some crazy deck lists in the top eight thus far. We still need to figure out who is going to complete the top eight, though, Corey. I need to know. I need to know, too. And I'm hoping <laughs> we'll have answers soon. So, yeah, fingers crossed. We're just going to sit here and uh, hear from Maria and Cedric. Who's made the top eight? <laughs> Thank you tell so much, us. Ailey and Corey. <laughs> hey, I can't tell you just yet. That's Riley Knight's job. We're going to wait for him to give us our big top eight announcement. Until then, Cedric, I just want to know from you, big thoughts about the term tournament overall. We've had some huge stories here this weekend. Uh, we have had some pretty crazy stories this weekend, right? So Simon Nielsen looks like he's in the top eight. Again, we've already talked about the early bike ride and almost missing the draft. Had a couple interviews with Riley, and he was like, you know, I actually think I would have been okay missing the draft. Liar! <laughs> Why do you lie? 